Hello there. Welcome to this new series where we'll be playing as has. As you can see, uh, we're going to be testing out hard difficulty for both design and AI racing. And we're going to do this with has. We had about 400 votes on the poll and a good 63-64% picked has there. So they won out. And we will be, as I said, playing has here. They're one of the teams that I haven't had a go with yet. So probably a good option here. The season objective is sixth, which could be honestly fairly interesting one for the first season and uh, we have a low starting balance now has itself is rated six in terms of car performance so the car isn't really bad the headquarters are terrible though and the staff and driving performance aren't the best but uh, this isn't too big of a problem i would assume now we have resta as a technical chief so we'll see how we can do with the uh, with the team here but honestly shouldn't be much of a uh, much of an issue here so we're gonna go with uh not easy i don't know how to easy but yeah we're gonna be playing as has we're gonna be playing with hard difficulty and we're gonna be turning off the the guidance options here because honestly i think that should be fairly all right so let's go we'll see how uh, this actually develops but yeah the goal behind this is just to have a look at the new difficulties do they actually have an effect I did make a short video uh, yesterday, which basically was about uh, what we could see. For races, the AI definitely are pushing more aggressively. They're taking advantage of their tires, their fuel, and being a little bit more willing to kind of do a bit of an attack when they need to. With that in mind, though, let's have a look at where the car is uh, currently. So currently, the car is uh, pretty decent here. We're lacking top speed, but we have a decent DRS. We have decent cornering. Honestly, it's not bad. Same for the cooling here. We start around 50% for both of these, so we can already start doing a little bit of experimenting with making car parts. We only have 15 million to our name though, and honestly what I really would like to get here is probably an upgrade to the facilities. The factory in particular, uh, this would be really nice. We don't really have the money for this, so we're just going to have to live with two project capacity for now. And might use some engineers to speed up certain pieces to try and, you know, stretch things out. Usually I prefer to use the full engineer time. Basically, what I mean by this is that I just use one engineer uh, on my designs because, well, there's two reasons for this. The completion dates is longer. The project will take longer, but it's the most efficient use of uh, in terms of money to expertise gain, which would be your stats. If I speed this up, I'll be getting, you know, more the same basically amount of expertise, but in less days. So it is somewhat, you know, better. You'll get more total actually on 30 days versus 20 days. But the idea here is that you do it quick and, you know, get more money that way. But at the same, more expertise that way. But at the same time, you're going to have a little bit of a problem with uh, with money and cost cap generally. So I do play it pretty conservative there and uh, not really rushing pieces. There was a couple of questions on that. So just want to get that out there right away. Now, for all has here, in terms of how we want to develop this car, uh, it's going to be pretty much pretty straightforward. I think we're going to do what we usually do here, which is to put our first safety period into the underfloor and we're going to be rushing this underfloor to just try and get it out there a little bit quick and we're going to be rushing it with the main mainly the engineers now we are probably going to end up using this uh underfloor a little bit so i'm a little bit unsure how i want to invest the the time here because the underfloor is kind of good at everything that's the that's the whole idea but i think we're going to do something a little bit like this we're not going to get any you know high gains and high speed and dirty air tolerance but we're going to be focusing on getting the drag reduction the low speed the medium speed and get those stats up for our underfloor which should help in the long run we are lacking a little bit of top speed so this is going to be the idea we're going to put cfd time into it and as i said we'll put six engineers on this project just get it done a little bit quicker we could rush it but at this point we are actually so poor that we're going to just try and get something done basically halfway through the season and that'll also give us a chance to test the ai uh, on their development so it's going to be fairly interesting to uh, to see honestly so we're going to do this for the underfloor pretty straightforward pretty simple for the other two pieces that i want to make i do like to make uh, a chassis usually because the chassis is pretty decent in its high speed capacity here medium speed everything there we're going to sacrifice some engine cooling which isn't the best but honestly i'll take a little bit of a engine cooling sacrifice we can get that back with the side pod for this one, we'll put one extra engineer on, one extra engineer on it just now, bring that down to 28 days. So basically, these two are going to be done around the same time, and we're going to be doing basically some longer projects here. I do want to do the side pods, 
we kind of have to do the side pods, honestly. Because if we do the side pods, we can kind of make up for that engine cooling problem that we now have created for ourselves. So we're going to make the side pods here focused on airflow middle and engine cooling. So we get something like this. It's still a huge amount of engine cooling regained here. We do lose a bunch of top speed, but we get a lot of cornering ability in exchange. So that is going to be the play. Run this one on normal. There's not really much else we can do. And we're also going to go ahead and design the final piece. And here the choice is going to be between the front wing and the suspension. Now, the reason why I'm taking front wing versus suspension is that honestly, both of them do kind of the same thing here. Mainly the suspension, though, is very good at two things. Uh, the brake cooling here, but also low speed cornering ability. So we're actually going to do the suspension before the front wing. Now, the front wing would probably give us more uh, of a balanced build, if you will, because the front wing is also pretty good at both of those. But we're going to be doing the same thing that we did with uh, with basically uh, the chassis in the sideboard here. We're going to get our brake cooling from the uh, suspension, and then we're going to sacrifice it on the front wing because side pod and also the, the suspension are far better at giving cooling than, say, the chassis and the front wing. So we're going to be sacrificing that on those pieces and get more in return. But as you can see here, the dirty air tolerance, the brake cooling here is going to be a bit of an issue uh, when we're getting down to towards 40%. So we'll have to see what we do with that. We might do something with the underfloor. We might give a little bit of airflow sensitivity here on the rear wing as well. We do have options. But for now, we are going to go ahead and do the uh, low speed front wing, sorry, suspension with uh, some cornering ability. And that should be decent enough. We'll get more cornering stats, of course, if we had done the front wing, we'd get some medium cornering too. But again, we do want to get the brake cooling up before we start, you know, bringing it back down. So those are going to be the four initial projects. We're going to be lacking uh, front wing, rear wing. We'll get them done later. And for the underfloor here, we're going to start a new project as soon as this one is done. Now, currently we do have about 10 million so what I'm thinking here is that we're going to be a little bit cheeky and we're going to actually start developing the factory. This is going to come with a small risk uh, in the sense that, well, we now only have 3 million to our name. We need to start new projects once the current projects are done. And to add to that, we're also going to need to deal with some other issues. However, we'll deal with that when we get, you know, get there first day. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look at the other parts of the team. I should probably have uh, structured this a little bit better when we started. So our spoiling director is probably not the sharpest uh, sharpest that we could get. And honestly, I would like to replace him if I can. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we actually have available to us in terms of sporting directors. And we can find that Peron is interested. He's usually a pretty good pick. But I think we're going to make our life a little bit harder here and just stick with the one that we have for now. Uh, because it's going to cost us a little bit of money to break contracts, things like that. And I do want to see how the pick group works now on a bit of a, shall I say, harder save. Like the difficulties doesn't actually have an effect on the pick group, but I want to see if the fatigue bugs and things like that have been fixed. And having a worse chief would probably make it a little bit easier to check that. So we'll go ahead and have that going for us. Now, the other staff here isn't uh, super good. The race engineers are decent enough. Not really any uh, any problems. This man is a feedback genius, apparently. So uh, Magnuson should have 100% cast that up for the entirety of it. Melvin, pretty decently balanced. More focused on the airflow sensitivity, which is kind of neat for us. And rest layer too, fairly well balanced. So in terms of development, we do want to focus a little bit on the underfloor. Uh, Let's see here. What do we have? I think ground effect here. Front wing side pods are still decent. So we'll do that. For Melvin, we want to focus on downforce. So high, medium, uh, low speed downforce along with airflow sensitivity. Well, I would rather have airflow management, honestly. So we're going to sac we're gonna do this. But honestly, either of these works. Basically, your downforce here, high, medium, and uh, low. Uh, for this one, is basically your cornering ability, your sensitivity is following other cars, and here, drag reduction is top speed, you know, basically how quick you can go, as well as basically the multiplier on uh, airflow, so that works well. For Resta, we got that set up. Honestly, the race engineers can do uh, what they're kind of doing. We're going to go with industry standards here, because we want to increase aptitude and processes. 
basically how efficient our pick is at training. So that should be good. I think we're all caught up right now and can actually get started. So yeah, probably should have structured the start a little bit, a little bit chaotic, probably moving a little bit too fast. So just to summarize, we have now started a project for four parts. We're focusing on the underfloor and the chassis to begin with uh, to get ourselves a little bit of a boost. The car isn't bad. And in a month, which basically would be uh, right here, we can probably have some interesting parts coming in for Australia. So that would be interesting. We might be able to, say, get an upgrade for one car. So whoever, do, whoever does best in Bahrain, whoever does best in Jeddah, we'll probably have a couple of new parts for Australia. And we'll have to see how many races we do in this first episode. But I'm thinking we try maybe getting up to Baku just to give it a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a sense of how this is going to work out for us. Key staff, sponsor obligations. Let's have a look here. Driver's control rating performance will be reduced. So Magnuson is going to have a misery of a season. 16, ah, 16 races, he's going to have his control reduced. And Hulkenberg is going to be no development, basically. Pick group performance decrease, 19. Yeah, um... I'm going to be sad here. Well, at least we do have some merchandising. Almost maximum merchandising. So we should have some money coming in. Finances. Um, I really use this, so I actually get lost. So we actually have five and a half million monthly. So that ticked over. I guess we'll be fine, honestly. Pittipaldi is our, um, you know, reserve driver. We have Magnus in here. That can a little bit of breaking. Good enough ability, which honestly isn't a very useful stat, unfortunately. So basically 80 overall. Probably 79, actually, in reality. Kind of same way with Hulkenberg. He too has extremely high adaptability. Both of them do. Which is going to, you know, lessen how effective they actually are, unfortunately. With that said, though, we do want to set them up onto, you know, development plans. And currently, I still say smoothness and cornering rather sorry smoothness and braking are probably going to be two of your most important um stats so for now we'll just put him on pace short runs getting the smoothness up would be nice but getting the uh speed up here would probably be better and for hulkenberg he has all right smoothness but he too has basically as soon as as he has uh braking so we'll put him to on short runs get that cornering and braking ability up if we can and if we can't that's just going to be me being very, very sad. Now, in terms of pick group training, uh, we do want to make sure that we don't uh, force him too hard here. And they're already tired. So that slows down the progress a little bit. But I think this is all right. But we do need to slow down the, uh, the training here before Australia, for sure. So... Let's do it like this. Even if the pit crew, the pit crew, the pit stops here are long, it's not actually a problem. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that gym session too, just to be safe. Brings it down to 14. Usually you want to be around, uh, before it used to be 20%, I'd say go down to about 10% now. 12, 10, 15, 15% really, just to be on the safe side. And also, the lower your fatigue is, the more efficient your training actually is. So it's not really recommended to push training in when tired. But... But uh, it is what it is. We don't really have much of a choice at the start of the season. And it is very kind of taxing to a point. So depends on basically your training days, how much of a break you have. If it's uh, a long break, you might want to push them a little bit more. But I might need to make a new video on that sometime later and explain it a little bit better, probably. Okay, so testing results here is the same that we saw earlier. We have decent cornering ability. And honestly, this car should probably be able to fight for points already in Bahrain. So I think we're going to go with that. We're going to save both drivers into Q2, qualifying position. Uh, again, hey, we played a little bit passively, both drivers into Q2. Uh, we do need extra money, but at the same time, we don't need to be, you know, stupid to get that money. We are going to gamble on one driver in the points, though. And let's say that top 15, three races, one driver. We could do this, but I think we'll do this and we'll see how the upgrades actually act after Australia. So that should be good. And with that, I think we're ready to just jump straight into Bahrain. 
going to be interesting. Let's see how we perform here. Again, hard difficulty for AI development, hard difficulty for us in terms of AI race pace. So our first quarter here is actually going incredibly well. You can see that we are in Q2. We're currently 9th and 10th. And both our drivers are currently on their final flying laps. So unless Ocon and Gasly improves here, we might actually beat them out in the first race of the season. And Gasly there didn't actually flag, improve. So at least we have him beat in quali. We'll have to see if Ocon improves. I don't think he can. I think he's on a slow lap. So we are basically through with both cars here into Q3 immediately. And honestly, I have no faith in us beating any of these uh, cars in front here. We just don't have a car or drivers for that matter that can kind of compete. And with that said, though, I did not expect us to have two cars in Q3 after the first race. So the car is actually pretty solid. But as I said, what we're going to do is just be very, very boring properly and just kind of sandbag in quality. But since we have three sets of soft, we might try for a miracle run and see if we can start a little bit higher up on the uh, on the grid. But honestly, a very, very good start to this. Now, remember, for the new difficulties, they don't apply to quality. So the AI is still the same as they were before this patch in terms of the qualifying performance. All right, we did beat the expectations there. I will not lie. Magnus in seventh and Hulkenberg in ninth. Uh, nothing too special here. We just did the first run on Usos. I put on fresh off the final run. Stroll here did have an incident. He locked up, which uh, basically after not a good first run, put him back to 10th. But still, a bit surprising in that we actually qualified as high as we did. But this does give us an excellent chance for the race itself. And uh, I'm a little bit unsure here what we should actually pick as a strategy. Uh, because I'd really love to just stay with the cars in front. But in terms of the compound performance here, the softs just are insane. They are about 8 tenths quicker than the mediums. And they'll stay that way for about 20 laps. So just insane altogether medium to hard about 25 laps so honestly we might want to try and avoid the hard here pit lane is just 23 seconds as well so we could try some cheeky cheeky strategies but uh, we do have a high chance of making errors on those pit stops if we do but potentially doing something like say start on the medium push it go over to a soft and then a different soft because we do have two fresh ones could definitely be very very viable here and that is honestly what I think we might do. The main problem with doing this would be, of course, the fact that we might run out of durability. So something like this is, as I said, fairly viable. It's uh, probably going to be akin the same as what the AI is doing. Now, if we put in a hard stint here, we could potentially, uh, as you can see, won't really matter much. It's going to be slower. So we're probably going to do this. It's probably the best strategy that we can do. And as long as we can stay with the teams in front, it should be fine. We can push a little bit more towards the end of these soft stints. We can push, uh, potentially also stretch the medium stint if we have a good DRS train to help us out with. But I think this is a better strategy for us right now. And we're going to put both cars on it. It just makes the most sense to do that. And as you can see, we're actually running these soft tires on an aggressive setting rather than full attack. And that's basically how you want to do things. Your, uh, well, not first stint here, but your harder compound you want to run on attack to get the more out of it and then when you can run, run your softer compounds on you know less attack to kind of make up for that as you can see we can even do something like this and if you want to be really cheeky uh, we could try something like this but as you can see 13 seconds slower so it's better to just run them aggressive although as said we can run them standard and we'd barely lose any time we could probably run a standard to say the halfway point here then run attack and still make uh, something up here, but running them aggressive just makes more sense, and then adding a little bit of attack towards the end. So that's going to be the strategy here. Uh, it's probably, again, just a better one. The hands here just aren't very viable for Bahrain. Uh, of course, attack kind of does make up for that, but we do need to take into account this time around that the AI is going to be using same kind of aggressive strategies. We saw that in the test video. The AI was very willing to run basically the same strategy that I do, which is a full attack strategy. And they kind of kept up with us. So it's going to be a little bit more of an interesting one there. So good setup for both cars. Everything is looking good. I think we are ready to just jump into the first race of the season. Starting 7th, starting ninth, And honestly, it's uh, very promising for things to come. Here in Sakir, the floodlights. Here we go. 
with the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Looks like we had a decent enough start, but we are facing Mercedes on soft tires. And Hulkenberg is going to have a bit of a rough time there. Same here for really Magnussen. Uh, something weird happened there. <laughs> Gap formed immediately. But I say that is an acceptable start. Losing a position with the Hulkenberg is not really a problem. Same here really for Magnussen. And what we're going to do is just turn down the risk taking. We don't really need much in terms of a result here from the first few races. If we get a point... That is more than enough for me. So, again, play safe. We don't have an upgrade car. There's no need to take superior risks here. We aren't really fighting anyone but the cars that are down in 13th and below, which is Williams, the uh, Alpha Tauri, McLaren, and Alfa Romeo. So, we'll be fighting Alpine probably towards the end of the season, maybe even Mercedes. But right now, those are the ones that we are worried about. So, again, not really a big deal. Now, Magnussen has fallen off here from the cars in front because, well, they are quicker cars. They have, for the most part, better drivers. Well, basically all of them are better drivers uh, in, you know, the context of the game. And they're all going to be pushing pretty hard here. And that is kind of the idea behind the hard difficulty. The AI is going to be pushing more. And generally, because of that pushing, you'll be seeing more gaps forming, uh, depending on, you know, how different the different cars are. Now, Hulkenberg has been overtaken, which isn't a surprise again. There's a lot of soft runners. They will be a lot quicker than us for the first 10, even 15 laps. And that is going to make life kind of a pain. So for the time being, we're just going to manage. We're going to stay where we are. Magnus and 2 has lost a position, but again, it's not really a big deal. We're just going to try and stay where we are, manage these tires. And probably from the second half of this stint, we'll be seeing if we can actually fight in any way, sh shape, way or form. Hulkenberg still just falling backwards, but again, not really an issue because we're fighting softs on medium tires and the softs just have a huge advantage right now. So we've fallen down to 9th and 12th, which we still are. Now Magnussen is actually in a very good position because he's 9th and he's running with a, you know, an Aston, a Mercedes, but we have a different problem and that is related to the driver confidence. The driver confidence now is low enough that we don't get any bonus stats. And that is slightly concerning. Now, when we do pit, we should be able to get that back. But the fact that the driver confidence has fallen uh, is also a, a result of us qualifying higher than we should. And as you can see right now, uh, Magnussen is starting to fall a little bit behind. Even with DRS, he's struggling to keep up because of the fact that Stroll and Russell are switching position in basically every DRS zone. And that makes it harder to keep up, although it looks like we're kind of back to look more stable right now. But they were close there to kind of leaving Magnussen behind, which wouldn't have been good for us. Let's put it like that. Now, in terms of the AI and their pushing tendencies, we can actually have a quick look here, although I probably want to pace, pause the game before I do. So, as you can see, we are running basically the exact same strategy as Leclerc is running right now. We can see that on time temps. We've been going full attack. Leclerc... In lap 13, is still going full attack himself. Uh, same with Sainz, basically. Same with Piastri. We can even see that the soft runners here are running, maybe not full attack, but at the very least aggressive. Because 130 degrees is overcooking. And in the our case here, Norris is pretty close. So he might actually also be running full attack. I guess Verstappen is running aggressive. Paris is definitely running full attack. Russell, again, might be running aggressive. But yeah, they've definitely worn down these soft tires pretty quickly and pretty aggressively. So the AI now will actually be very, very aggressive with their strategies. And that's kind of what we like to see, particularly also with the, uh, if you consider how effective running attack has been so far in this, uh, this game's life cycle. So very, very promising. And we'll have to see if we can actually fix the confidence issues that our drivers have. It's going to be a little bit easier to dealing with that once they get a little bit more well acquainted with their engineers, because as you can see, Hulkenberg is overtaken, falls down to medium again, so those shifts are going to be smaller, the better affinity, and also the better... Uh, well, there's one stat, I don't actually remember what it's called right now on the engineer, but the better that stat is, the less, you know, the negative hits they'll take, the better positive hits, so we'll have to see what we do with our engineers in the future, but I think we're fine for now. 
Magnus is still running with Russell, but a lot of pit stops are happening now. Soft runners have run the tires into the ground. You can even see that on Russell as a good example. So we're going to be stretching these mediums and we'll be aiming at getting onto soft tires and using the tire advantage to get overtakes done and then get our confidence back up. So we'll run the last few laps here until we pit. We're getting very close now to our pit stop here. Magnussen will be pitting on this next lap. We're going to finally go into a soft tire. And as you can see, they're going to be 2.7 seconds quicker from the get-go. We're going to do the same here for Hulkenberg. And uh, that should be probably all right. So we'll let them run attack. We'll t change them down to aggressive before the, uh, before the you know, the pitting here. But as you can see, the, we're the only team right now that hasn't pitted. And... We are going to be moved fairly far down on the board here. But at the same time, we should have a bit of a tire advantage, which should make it easier to get the overtakes done. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be as bad as I, you know, initially thought. Now for Hulkenberg, he should be pitting, and he did. So Magnus will do more and more lap. Because apparently I got him off the line. No pistol problem, but as you can see, Hulkenberg falls down to 14. So you can imagine just how much of a problem we're going to have uh, with just getting overtakes done. We could, of course, have pitted earlier. Probably would have made it a little bit easier on us. But I think we can work Hulkenberg back up. And in doing so, get a little bit of that confidence back again. So Magnuson here should be coming out in 12th, I would think. 11th. And getting Gasly should be simple. DRS. And we'll be trying to, as I said, get them back up into the points. Hopefully both of them. For now though, I'll be working with Hulkenberg and we'll be using energy here to try and get past the cars in front. But it looks like the Vries has uh, been left behind by Albon and that should make that a fairly smooth pass. So we didn't even need to do anything. But yeah, for now, we'll allow things to proceed and we'll see where we're at once we get closer to that final pit stop of ours. We're carrying again very closer to the end of our stints and we have a lot of cars already pitting. As you can see, we do have a couple of cars in front of us. Uh, we had caught up to Ocon and Gasly when we pit, uh, when we uh, before they pitted, so we're probably going to come out behind them no matter what we do here. So for now, we're just going to run attack for a few laps here, kind of wear these softs down, and the goal is going to be to run them down into the ground. Basically, we're going to be running them as far as we can uh, because, well, the softs still hold a fairly significant advantage. And as you can see, we're running 36 threes and 36 eights. Well. We're still running kind of comparable to the others. We're losing a little bit of time here, but I think it's going to be beneficial in the long run by just us having better tires towards the end. So it's a little bit of a gamble, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's a gamble that I am hoping is going to pay off here. So we're going to get the final piss up stone. Need to get Magnuson probably one more lap before we pit him. That should be all right. And we'll be pitting Hulkenberg this lap because his tires are virtually gone. And he'll be coming out behind Gasly, but that is kind of what we expected. And depending on, you know, how well he pushes here, we could still catch up to them. Alpine isn't really the ones that we really are, you know, focused on fighting. But Magnussen is currently in the points. And the same can be said for Hulkenberg here. Russell, Ocon, both of them are on medium tires. We have a fairly significant tire advantage here. So potentially we could see both of our cars in the in the points, although to be honest, catching Russell is probably out of the question, but catching Ocon should definitely be doable. Now in terms of time here, we're doing 34 nines. It's just half a second quicker, 13 laps to go. It's gonna be close, but towards the end of the stint, we can go a little bit more aggressive on the attack. So we'll see how that goes. Hulkenberg, probably not gonna get in the points there. It's just a little bit too far behind, but we can also turn him up as well towards the end. For Magnuson here, I think it's going to be a little bit too difficult to catch Ocon. Uh, we aren't really gaining much about four tenths now per lap. So, well, we might make it into the DRS zone. It's still going to be probably a little bit too much. For Hulkenberg, not really too much we can do there for him. He's uh, not going to be catching Yassi, so we'll turn him down to aggressive. Just be sh and make it a little bit safer on the tires. For Magnuson, though, we are still going to keep on pushing. And we could actually see him here catching that Alpine and getting DRS. And if he does, that should be more than enough for him to get by. We still have a tire advantage. And Russell here, if he has a lockup, he could potentially have a puncture. So as you see, the AI definitely is pushing the tires as far as they can go. And that is something that we do like to see. For Magnussen, he is uh, having his big moment there, getting the Alpine. 
And we'll have to see if we can actually push, you know, away here now. That's going to be the big one. But yeah, definitely having that good quality is probably the only reason why we are potentially finishing as high as we are here now. Because if we didn't quality where we did, well, then there would be for certain no chance of anything like this happening. Now, Hulkenberg isn't that far behind Gasly. And if both of our cars beat the Alpines, that would actually be quite a... Uh, Quite an Im impressive start to the season. Now, Ocon could still come back at us. We still have about two laps to go. Paris, in this case, just started. I was about to say Verstappen. Paris just started the final lap. But I just want to have a look at this before we kind of end this first race. Because this has to do with, again, the difficulty. So, for Leclerc, uh, he had a bit of an incident here, I think. He saved a little bit of time. But he did actually push for that entire first stint. They did pit a bit earlier than me at 56%. But they probably still had a better race pace, I would argue. And as you can see right now, he is pushing fuel too a little bit. For science, not pushing these softs too hard. But again, there are some Orions in how they use the tires. So it's looking good from this perspective, honestly. You can also see them kind of, if they're saving, if they're pushing. And... Uh, it's reflected on basically everything. Everything is now a little bit more flexible. Well, not just a little. Very flexible in terms of how the AI does race strategy. And that is always nice to see. Still though, it is a good uh, first result here. Potentially again. Need to finish this final lap for us, for us which starts now. And Magnus are just barely within fuel limits here. We, again, I'm just going to leave Hulkenberg as he is. Uh, no chance of us getting points unless we have punctures. So... We'll just have to deal with that. Now, as I said, Russell, signs a lot of cars that are pushing these tires to the end, and they are actually saving tire probably right now to make sure they don't lose too much. Well, that is something that is interesting to see that they are will do. But for now, though... Oh, I should have deployed earlier. I was too focused on something else. We could actually maybe have gotten Russell. But yeah, his tires are done. Uh, we probably will not be getting him to the line, though. That is a bit unfortunate. Okay, Kim, that is a missed opportunity there. That's on me. But yeah, I was a little bit too focused on the tires and difficulty. Yeah, I really didn't think we'd catch Russell, too. So you can actually see how much he had to well, save. To talk about today. But uh, why was I shown an Alfa Romeo? <laughs> what? <laughs> the game thinks I'm playing Alpha again? What is this? <laughs> But yeah, we scored two points in the first race. Hulkenberg in 12th. Honestly, a pretty good showing, I dare say. And we had a decent quality, which of course uh, played into that. But Paris wins the first race. Verstappen second. Then the two Ferraris. Then Alonso, Hamilton, Stroll, Russell, us, and then Ocon. So, uh, going to be fairly interesting, I think. And as you see here, in terms of pit stops, I don't think we're going to be winning this championship this time around, honestly. Uh, we're probably going to be focusing a little bit more on, you know, pit stop times as we go. Because we are close to the three second mark, which honestly is a little bit too slow for us. But yeah, both drivers lost a few positions here. Two for Magnussen, three for Hulkenberg. But honestly, that is just how it goes sometimes. And we're paying out a bonus here. And we get three and a half. No, we get 2,800. 2, uh, 2.8 million as our base rate. So we don't actually earn too much from the races either. And that is a bit of a concern in terms of developing the team and developing the car. Now, next up, we do have uh, Saudi Arabia. That one's going to be interesting. We also have a new APR period. And as you can see, uh, this uh, race here did cost way much more than any than we used to. Usually, it's about 10%. We're a bit over that this time around, which means that we might need to invest in an extra engine, basically a full set at the very least towards the end of the season, which is usually how it is in your first season with low uh, cooling. But we'll take it. If it happens, it happens. We'll just deal with it then. We have a design center fire. That's going to suck. Basically, our design center is caught on fire. We're going to need to investigate it. And it's going to be a shutdown for 10 days. Meaning that the project that was supposed to be finished here is now finished here. Meaning that we'll only have any upgrades for Baku, really. But honestly, that's okay with me. Because that means that uh, basically, well, we lose time, which isn't great. But basically, it means that we'll be able to make all four paths that we are designing right now in time for Baku for probably both cars, which should be okay.
Now, for Jeddah, uh, we did see that we could reach Q3, but I think we were a little bit lucky. So we're just going to be a little bit passive again. Both cars, top 15. And let's say one car, top 15. Jeddah is one of those a little bit more harder tracks to do, to play on. So particularly if you qualify badly, which we are prone to, let's be honest. So we'll be a little bit more cautious here. For now though, let's jump into Jeddah. So we just finished qualifying for Jeddah. And once again, we have a driver in Q3 and uh, he's beating out some other names. We did fall uh, behind Gasly though, which is probably a little bit negative. Magnussen down in 12th. It's still not bad, honestly, we'll take that. And uh, yeah, it's looking good so far. Might be a little bit too simple. Maybe I should have done this with Alpha again, um, but it is looking good. Now for Jeddah, we'll be going through the reports over this uh, series too. So honestly, if you want to have some strategy advice, this is probably going to be decent enough for that. I uh, probably should just make a supercut race strategy guide at one point. I was actually planning on that, but uh, well, it died with the hard ripe. For now though, we are going to focus on the tires here rather than random tangents that pop up in my mind. So the softs here are going to be better than the mediums for about 10 laps. The medium to hard equivalent is uh, a little bit more than that, about 25. So medium is probably the king here with softs coming in second, but hards are really a good option too, don't get me wrong. Very short pit lane, just 19 seconds. So what we probably are going to do here is going to do a medium hard soft tire and that's going to be a little bit difficult because you can actually do a one stopper here on full attack that is a little bit risky though and the reason why i'm saying that is really risky here is because Jeddah is one of those tracks where this is the expected degradation but what the actual degradation is going to look like is probably something like this where it follows this line to about halfway through and then it's going to drastically fall off and probably hit it around lap 15. and the reason for this is that Jeddah has much heat in the track itself so it's the track is very very hot and that extra heats get put into the tires and it increases the degradation speed there's a couple of tracks that does this uh but Jeddah is one of those notable uh villains 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 when it comes to those so Jeddah is kind of again a bit of a problematic child in that department but it also one of those tracks where you kind of end up using every single tire and we're just going to do the same thing we did last time. Put them both on the same strategy. I am tempted to put Hulkenberg on hard to start with. But it's one of those things that is probably going to backfire. If anything, we should put Magnuson onto a soft tire to begin with. And just have him push. And then try and make up places by basically undercutting. And honestly, we might actually do that. Put them both on different strategies here. Which would be this for Magnuson. Where we are just going to push those soft tires until they perish. And then we'll go ahead and pit him fairly early. Try and use these hards on full attack to uh, undercut some of the uh, other drivers. In this case, the Alpines, maybe a Mercedes. And I think that's going to be the play there. A little bit different for both of them. But basically, when you are midfield, you kind of want to. For if you're top 10 or above, usually you want to kind of extend that first in a little bit. Gain some gaps to further down. If you start outside the top 10... Pushing as much as you can those first few laps can be very beneficial, particularly if you're doing a very short stint. Pit onto a fresh tire, catch up to the back of the grid before they start pitting, and then you kind of become the roadblock. And towards the end of your stint here, the hard stint, we will get a little bit of DRS uh, helping from the other teams. Um, or we'll get left behind. Usually we get left behind, so it's not really that helpful. But this medium stint should do wonders for us. So we'll try this. It should be a decent strategy. The drivers are... It's almost time for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it's lights out. Lights out, away, away we go. go. Did Hulk get a good start? Looks like it. Shouldn't... Ah, oh, no, that's a horrible start. On second thought. And it almost looked there like he was going to murder Stroll. But yeah, loses the position to... Uh... Oh, is he coming back? Well, we are still going to put them to rarely defend, though, because, again, uh, it's not worth wrecking the entirety of the car for just a point. 
And again, I do enjoy using the ERS battle assist, mainly because of the fact that the battle assist gives the driver more, you know, use over the energy. And in theory, it is slower than other settings, but that's mainly because your driver will actually recharge the battery when he has free air. So, yeah, not really that. You, you can toggle it off if you're trying to catch up to another car, don't want him to recharge the battery. But if not, it's perfectly fine to just leave it on. You'll lose a little bit of time, but that time lost is actually used to recharge the battery. Now, in terms of this first lap here, we basically settle in, I think. It's still one big uh, DRS train. And that's kind of the idea here with Magnuson. If this stays one big DRS train, him pitting early is going to be massive for him. And you can actually see here what I thought about the track temps being high. If they're in red up here, you might be in trouble because you can expect the temperatures in your tires to go up fairly quick. You can kind of see this with Magnuson here, already up to 121 degrees. So we'll have to try and deal with that. For now though, I think we're happy with where we are. We are going to try and use energy, uh, DRS, to kind of make our way forwards. And honestly, if we even if we end up overcooking these tires and burn them, that is fine. We might need to pay a little bit more attention to Hulkenberg though, and maybe slow down his degradation. But even if Magnuson, you know, destroys these tires now, it's going to be somewhat fine. But uh, the gap down into Piastri is already worrying at 8 seconds. Uh, if it keeps on growing like that, we're actually going to be in trouble by the time we do this first pit stop. So we'll have to see how we do that if we want to turn him down. For now, though, I think we're just going to stick with the gamble. Hulkenberg is falling downwards, but uh, that is fine. The other cars here are kind of also pushing. We're pushing more, though, so that is kind of worrying. But I think we'll just tune down Hulkenberg a little bit here, make sure that those mediums last the entire distance. Uh, or rather, it should be fine to keep him on attack. We might just need to juggle it a little bit once it gets very close to, you know, going over the edge here. For Magnuson, he is struggling to get behind this DRS train, and that is basically kind of what we expected. And that is the reason why we do want to kind of pit him early. And here you can actually see degradation is higher than expected due to mainly the heat. So we'll see how we handle that for now though we'll just speed along to that first pit stop we're probably not going to be able to make much uh, much moves or any moves for that matter so magnuson now has reached that point where we do want to pit him and unfortunately he's probably going to end up in somewhat of a traffic jam here with the debris and piastri with show and sergeant but as long as we can get by which is why we kind of tried to recharge a little bit of the last couple of laps we should be somewhat a-okay and that's going to be the hope here. It's a little bit of a gamble. Hulkenberg has fallen down to 11th and is getting slowly left behind. We have a little bit of a heat problem with this size. So nothing really we can do there. The other teams here are also running a little bit more cautiously compared to us right now. And the fact that we have a DRS train here driven, driven by Hamilton too doesn't really help our chances. So that's the main reason here. The Alpines have gotten a little bit of help. Magnus here. In the back, we're going to have to try and work and get him back up to, uh, you know, potentially a point scoring position. But as I said, this is one of those tracks where we're going to have a little bit of a harder time. Magnuson is climbing up here now. He's up into 18, which isn't great, but not terrible. And for Hulkenberg here, yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to stretch him just one more lap. Then we're going to get him onto the uh, hard tie as well. And he does actually have a very good window here for where he's going to come out. If we add, say, 20 seconds to this. It's going to come out between the uh, the Alfa Romeos. But soft runners here, a lot of them should be pitting fairly soon. Magnuson has used his entire battery. And he is, you know, the third car in the arrest train, which is horrible here. So we'll have to see if we can actually get him by before he loses too much time. But for now, we'll see if Hulkenberg actually has a good stop or not. And if he doesn't, I'm going to be kind of sad. But Magnuson, I think this is the optimal time to try and push. And we're also going to put him to high aggression here because we are going to need to get him by if we want any chance of anything, uh, of getting anything out of this uh, this race here. So Hulkenberg now is coming out. He comes out ahead of both alphas, so he his strategy is actually perfect here. A little bit of free air, just four seconds worth. But we see Sunoda. He's going to be pitting uh, within the next few laps, and that should make life a little bit easier. For Magnuson, he's still stuck. Uh, nothing really we can do for him. Other than just to try and recharge, but hopefully we can get him by sometime soon. We had the first pit stop from one of our direct rivals. Well, not really. It's Russell. Not really a direct rival. 
Uh, but you can see what I'm thinking here with the idea of the undercut. We got ahead of Russell. He's going to have a bit of a hard time overtaking us. But again, Russell here has jumped onto medium. So maybe not as hard as we hope. And it's going to be basically a little bit of a DRS train there. Now for Magnuson, he's actually made his way up a little bit. But he's still pretty far behind potential points. But once Ocon and Gasly pits here, we should be coming out ahead of them. Now Magnuson is going to be a little bit on the edge. So we definitely need him to push for the next few laps here in order to make anything like that happen. But the fact that we have Hulkenberg now running with Russell, and this is kind of the idea. Even if he runs with Russell, he should be able to take advantage of DRSing off him and his fresher medium tires. Hopefully, uh, unless he gets left behind like this. But again, we aren't fighting the Mercs, we're fighting the Alpines. And honestly, even that is kind of a little bit too early. So we're kind of happy with where we are, I dare say. For Magnuson, getting by Albon now is going to be kind of key. So we'll give him deploy here. He actually has the move already made. And again, the main thing here that we want to get by are Ocon and Gasly. He might actually end up going onto soft tires here. So we need to get that gap down to as much a lower gap as we can. Which is going to be a little bit difficult with our car currently. But it's looking good so far. So we just had Ocon and Gasly. Basically both of them opting to pit. Gasly pit a little bit earlier. But as you can see, we've actually beaten them out right now. So honestly, if we really wanted to, we could kind of try and slow them down. But as long as Magnuson is kind of in front, as long as Hulkenberg is kind of in front, we have a little bit of an advantage. But the fact that they pitted this late, 18 laps before the end, won't be too many laps before we need to pit either, uh, means that we probably will not have enough time here and enough laps to really catch up to them. I mean, this strategy didn't really pay off too well. But at the same time, we are going to be fighting here for... Basically top six in theory from a team perspective. So we'll have to see if we can actually do something that will allow us to catch Gasly and Ocon. But I think this was the best bet that we had. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't. Two stopper could probably have paid off better. But again, the main worry of something like that is the degradation here. That is, again, higher than you expect. Pretty much what we expect for the hards. But on low smoothness drivers, and again, 80 or around 80 isn't really low smoothness but it's low smoothness in the context of this game, Hulkenberg and Magnussen are going to struggle on tracks like Jeddah. It's just an unfortunate, uh, the unfortunate reality. Now, what we could do, if we want to be really, really dirty, is that we take Hulkenberg here, and we uh, slow him down. Put him to always defend, and in that way, end up kind of slowing down both Ocon and Gasly, and allow Magnussen to catch up a little bit. But I think we'll just play things as they are. We're going to be pitting... Hulkenberg here within a few laps here, maybe stretch one or two laps on those soft tires. For Magnussen here, I think we do want to pit him, probably this lap, just get him in. And I think we are going to do that, it should be quite a lot quicker, but it's going to come out pretty far back, so let's do that and have a look at the lap times. He is running quicker than the cars behind, but losing three positions shouldn't be a problem, and with the fresher tires and being able to run attack till the end, uh, I don't see any real problems here for him. So we're going to pit him. We're going to have to see if we can make back those positions though. It's going to be a little bit of a pain in the neck for sure. But again, I think that is the best option that we have for making something happen uh, over the course of this uh, this race in particular. And Hulkenberg has been overtaken by Ocon. He is falling a little bit behind and that isn't great. But again, not much we can do. Magnussen actually comes out in 13th and loses only one place. So that is brilliant for him. But we'll have to see if we can actually close down that 20 second gap to uh, to Gasly there. Gasly and all the softs. Tire difference isn't really that big, so I kind of doubt it. But we can always hope. Now for Hulkenberg, I did say I want to stretch him one more lap, which is basically this lap. So we're going to be pitting him. Currently running 10th. Should come out just ahead of Norris, is the hope. So he should have now a free, uh, basically 10 laps of free air to try and chase down Gasly. Uh, to reclaim his 10th position. And honestly, that's really all we can afford this race. So the AI is definitely, probably, a bit more clever than they used to be, I dare say. And as you see, Magnuson isn't too far behind either. So we could potentially have, well, why not beat both Alpines? They could at least catch maybe both of them, we'll see. At least one gets caught by both, maybe we'll see exactly how this plays out. 
For now though, I want to see exactly what we're looking at in terms of Hulkenberg's time. So we'll have to just wait for him to do one more lap. And we're also going to have to pay a little bit of attention to the fuel here. But I think it should be alright. And Hulkenberg is lapping how quick? 31 twos. So pretty sizable here in terms of uh, speed gain. About a second a lap. But that isn't really enough. That's the thing. He might catch Gasly, but it's going to be... Pretty darn close, let's put it like that. So for now, we'll speed things along, and we'll see if we can close down to the Alpine ahead of us. So Hulkenberg here is actually on quite the hunt. We are about one and a half second left, and uh, the thing here is that we are almost a full lap behind Verstappen. So in this case, we are still fairly safe in terms of not getting lapped, but we're basically starting the second to last lap right now. And with that in mind, it is going to be a little bit more challenging here because we're basically just going to have one more DRS zone to have a go at this. And it is pretty much coming up very, very soon at the end of, uh, well, this lap right here. So we do need to close down a little bit more, which we kind of have right now with the usage of ERS. And that looks kind of looked like they touched for a second. But I want to see here now if uh, the Hulk can launch a bit of an attack and he can I guess the move done the tires are quite hot. do you have a tire advantage though I still believe yeah we do and uh, as you can see the AI is once again pushing their tires to the brink but that is usually what you see in Jeddah so we probably should have pitted Magnuson a tad sooner too to help him out but uh, I'm, I'm still let's be honest here this is still a good result for us don't get me wrong uh, we're fighting for, well, a point, but it is a point more than we are expected to gain, unless, of course, someone in the top 10 DNF. So, Hulkenberg 10th this time around. Uh, we're beating Bark on. Strategy didn't really work out, but it was an interesting one, I feel. So, I'm still very happy with how we did things here. Verstappen wins, Paris second. Verstappen with fastest life should put him ahead in the championship. Alonso fourth with Stroll sixth, and we have Ferraris in third and fifth. Then the two Mercs, then Ocon, then Hulkenberg. So the drivers' championship then, as I said, Verstappen ahead with one point. Then really two major here. Let's see if we can actually keep ahead of the uh, Alpines towards the end. And we are once again not on the top ten board for a pit stop. So a little, little bit of work there. Luckily, we only have that one mistake. Uh, didn't really have much of an impact on the race. Although, to be fair, if Magnussen didn't have that, he probably would have gotten further up the grid. So, did have a little bit of an effect, but I don't think it would have made any points difference in terms of the points, so to speak. All pass still passed the car part inspection, but as you can see here, we lost almost 30% after just two race weekends, so we're definitely going to need an extra set of components at the end of this uh, this year for sure. And we might just have to focus on getting the engine cooling a little bit further up. And maybe focus a little bit more on development for next year. Rather than trying to get things done this year. Chassis has been made. Uh, I think we're just going to immediately manufacture this. And it is going to hurt the engine cooling a bit. That is kind of what we expected. And as you see, with a level 1 factory, it takes 2 weeks to make one chassis. Uh, although it looks like we do have something weird going on here because it's just 10 days on the second one. Oh, I know what this is. It's the sponsor. It's, it doesn't actually take 14 days. Disregard what I said. Uh, it's just so rare that I have a one factory that I just thought that was the case. It's actually 10 days, but we're losing days here because of the sponsorships where the factory gets paused on race weekends. So And probably one more day in there. So that sucks, but nothing we can do with that. We are going to spend a million to get two chassis done and the fact that we're going to spend 24 days with this lot is going to be kind of kind of meh we might need to potentially rush it or we just skip the underfloor in its entirety and uh get that second underfloor set done we'll have to see what, exactly what we do now in terms of development here we do want to design probably a rear wing if we can get it done for baku in 29 days probably not that's going to be a little bit too close I'm also very tempted to put in CFD time here, but honestly, there's probably better options to use it on. So, for now, we are going to go ahead and design a rear wing. No CFD time. 
you can split shifty time between several paths. It's not actually a you know a bad idea to do so. Uh, but what I'm thinking we do here is actually something like this. We get that little bit of dirty air tolerance back. We're going to lose some cornering ability. We can get the RS effectiveness and top speed. So we'll sacrifice a tiny bit of cornering. Actually, we'll not because I can just turn down the lifespan. Forgot about that. And we'll do it like this. We do need a little bit of dirty air tolerance back. Because we are making pieces that will, you know, have a negative impact. And we're just going to do one engineer. It is the most efficient use of our time. Now, the underfloor here that we have made, we did use CFD time on it, but the CFD time didn't really have the maximum effect on the current underfloor here. If you want to make an underfloor where the CFD has maximum effect, you're going to have to do another one afterwards. That is the wrong piece for starters, but we're going to have to do another one afterwards where we kind of do what we did for the previous one. And I don't remember exactly what we did for the previous one. But as you can see here, depending on where we place things, this is still going to be a very hefty upgrade. And even if we do something like this, it's still going to be fairly good. And that is because the, well, the expertise now has been applied for those, that CFD time. And that gives us a boost to our stats, which is not incorporated into the one that we just made. So we need to make another one. Question here is, what do I want to do with this? We could go more top speed. We don't really lose that much in terms of cornering ability and gain half a KPH. So I might want to do this. Could also sacrifice a little bit of middle, middle speed cornering ability here. Now nah, we're going to do this. It's going to be an underfloor mainly focused on medium. But this is fine. The top speed, everything. The dirt air tolerance that we lose here isn't that bad. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And we do want to rush this one. It's going to cost a lot of extra money to do so. Uh, but for this one, we're going to rush it so that we can try and get at least one out for. Uh, you guessed it for the, the next race in, uh, in Baku. And we'll have to see exactly how we do with the... With this, I might actually change it to just one. And then we rush the second one, potentially. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll get a refund. So let's just do that for now. And then we can change things later. So as you can see, the facilities are available due to sponsor obligation. So we might need to run, rush the first set of parts. And as I said, we might need to just maximize one car. For Baku. Now, for this race, we're going to just say one car in the top 15 again. We don't have any upgrades yet. The other teams might have. And I don't dare to go for Q3 here again. We need we need money. You know what? We're going we're gonna to gamble on beating one of the Alpines, I think. Sorry, not one of the Alpines. One of the Mercs or the... No, it is one of the Alpines. What am I even saying? So we're going to gamble on that. And I think that should be decent let's jump into australia but as as you've seen from the races so far i haven't shown you too much of them but the ai is more competitive i can say that for certain they do push a little bit more but of course I, what i'm really interested in seeing with this series is how they develop over the course of a season and uh mike did say mike takumi is so i'm referencing is basically the one that probably has the deepest understanding of the mechanics they say that the ai out developed him at one point so i'm looking forward to seeing if we see something similar here with that said let's jump into australia so uh unfortunately didn't make it into q3 this time around we have eliminated 11 and 12 the two alpines did make it through uh which is kind of what we expected we were a couple of tenths off and that kind of does happen nothing really we can do about that we'll just have to try and make it up for it during the race itself and it's going to be cloudy this time around. Usually it always rains here or we'll have some rain, which causes some problems. But luckily this time it's going to be dry. Now soft tires here, just quick of about 10, 12, 13 laps. And since this is a fairly short lap, well, fairly short lap track, that isn't really super good for the softs. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. For the mediums, they have a little bit more to go on, 5 tenths and with 200 degradation, so 25 laps of advantage. So we're probably going to do another two-stopper with all three compounds is what I'm thinking. And starting on the mediums would be viable here. P3 
purely due to the fact that we can probably get away from the, you know, back of the field. It is also Australia, so a safety car a red flag is also very, very viable. Starting on the hearts is therefore potentially a strategy that we could employ. And what I'm thinking then is that if we want to do that, we'd put Magnuson on the hearts. But I think for now, having them run the same strategy is fine. And sorry for sounding a little bit weird right now, but I am not feeling too good. And uh, I'm holding something back. Let's just leave it at that. For now, though, let's just go with this. It should be doable. And it is a boring strategy, I know, but it's probably the better one for this track. Now, again, we could start on the hards and just push. We could start on the softs and go all in. Uh, but I think we are going to see the same thing that we saw last time, that the cars in the back fall just so far behind. And it's a very short pistol here, just 19 seconds. So going a little bit longer should be fine. If it was like a 30 second pit stop, we could go with the softs immediately because we then have an extra 10 seconds uh, of potential gap that could help in our advantage. So this is what we'll go for. Should be pretty straightforward and simple. And we'll see if we can actually snatch another point here. That would be honestly pretty good. That Alpine had a horrible start. Kind of want to wish I could have a replay of that. Magnus is not having the best start either for that matter. Down into 14th now. I would kind of want to wish I had a replay there to see what actually happened to him. But Hulkenberg, good start up into 10th. But yeah, this is going to be horrible for his confidence, I would think. Definitely a good start from Hulkenberg. Kind of glad I didn't put him on the hard tires now. But uh, Magnuson here is going to have a little bit of a work cut out for him to uh, to make his way back up into the points. For now though, we're just going to kind of stay where we are. There's nothing much we can do. Ocon gets the overtake uh, kind of back on Hulkenberg there. Albon even gets an overtake done. So they're pushing really, really hard. And uh, yeah, could be that we might not want to go super defensive, at least for the first two laps here. But... I'd rather be safe than sorry, as I said earlier. And honestly, as long as we all run together, it's not really a big issue. For now, though, we're just going to allow time to pass. Because, again, there's not really much we can do. Uh, we do want to turn down the ERS usage. But at the same time, we'll have to see exactly how this ends up playing out. Because we are falling backwards. You can actually see Hulkenberg is losing to uh, Gasly. Some of the RS uh, trains are starting to form. So we'll have to see if the rest of the pack is slows down or if Hulkenberg now is just going to have a very, very bad race. We even see Magnussen here losing out to the Reese. So maybe I should have checked. Could be that the other teams have brought some big upgrades, which would be kind of insanity if they're this good. But let's face it, everyone has basically a stock car. If they bring an upgrade, they could actually be, be this insanely good. So... Wouldn't be that surprising. For now, though, we're just going to manage, kind of stay where we are, and then try and see if we can make our way a little bit further up and back into maybe the points. So we've actually had our first pit stop of the, the race here. Leclerc hit it. He's the one that started on all the softs. Hulkenberg is up to 11 with that, though, but again, Leclerc is going to just re-check in. So in reality, we're 12th. Magnussen here has gotten by Sonoda, but honestly, he's not having very good race pace, so... That is worrisome as well. For now, though, we're going to focus on Hulkenberg probably to get him back up into the points here. But uh, as we're seeing here, we're pushing basically the same way that soft users are, soft runners are pushing. So we might want to pit when they do, or maybe even a little bit sooner. But for the strategy to work, we're kind of going to have to stretch it a little bit, and that should be a okay. If they pit before us, the hope is going to be that they get stuck behind the cars for the back. And uh, we'll just try and make the best out of it if we can. Leclerc has already re-overtaken us, which shouldn't actually come as a surprise. For now, though, we're just going to push for that first pit stop. So we're actually going to do our first pit stop this lap. And as you can see, Piastri is pitting. But none of the soft runners have actually pitted yet. So they might actually be trying to stretch their tires. And we do have enough gap here that I think we can just pit both cars. We're going to be coming out towards the back of the grid. Uh, but nothing much we can do about that. It's just how things are going to have to be here. 
And hopefully Hulkenberg can beat the two Alpha Romeos out. That would be amazing if he did. Three second pit stop. He does beat them out. Magnuson does not. He's going to have a pretty miserable race again due to needing to get by the RS trains. And the main thing in now is just going to be getting by the soft runners, Albin, Sergeant. As long as we can actually jump them, this would still be a fairly, you know, successful strategy in, in my eyes. So hopefully we can make something happen, but we'll just have to wait and see. So Sergeant has finally picked, and as you can see here, he actually did come out behind Magnuson, which is what we kind of hope for here. So Albon currently still staying out, but is running, you know, a bit of a busted, uh, busted tire at this point. We'll have to see if we can actually jump him though, and he actually likes to stay out for one more lap, so potentially we could even see a puncture. Now for Hulkenberg here, we're going to deploy some energy, try and get by that. Uh, that Alpha Tauri as quickly as we can. And hopefully then also get by Norris as quickly as we can. Might need to even put up the... Sorry, I've actually put the energy usage for the wrong car. That is why I'm not seeing the results I'm hoping for. But yeah, we're going to try and get by. We should be able to jump Alban here, I think. Yeah, we're jumping everyone there up into 11th. That's what we'd like to see. Unfortunately there, Magnuson couldn't you kind of replicate that, but he's still getting further back up, and that is kind of what we'd like to see. Now, there are a bunch of still medium runs that are going to have to pit here, namely Gasly, and we might actually be able to jump him as well. So, looking forward to seeing if we can pull that off, and honestly, looks like we kind of can. So, it'll depend on how we do on that final soft stint in terms of how we're going to perform during this race. So we've just had Gasly pit, and as you can see, he came up out in 12th. Unfortunately, Magnuson just is unfortunately not making much headway with Sargent. Uh, it's just a bit unfortunate, but it is how it is sometimes. We've been kind of recharging, pushing, recharging, pushing. Hulkenberg, though, is up into 9th here, running currently behind Hamilton, who's on fresh soft. So as long as we can actually stay with Hamilton, I think we're going to be very, very happy, but yeah. Kind of unlikely that we're going to be able to stay with Hamilton on fresh softs when we're on older tyres. Still though, I think we're in a pretty decent spot here. And uh, Ocon, Gasly, those tyres are going to be dead by the end of this race for sure. So honestly, I think we have, a, as I said, a very, very good chance here. They are going to be pushing right now. And if, if Hulkenberg can stay with Albon... Uh, stay with Ocon, stay with Gasly, and take advantage of the ERS, DRS, sorry. That would be highly beneficial. But these hard tires are really starting to kind of let go. Might have been better to go with uh, maybe a less aggressive soft soft stint instead. All right, we're getting closer and closer to our final pit stop. And I think we're going to do it on this lap. We have kind of been, you know, left behind by Ocon. We have kind of been left behind by... Ghastly, and even if we do now pit, we might just have a little bit too few laps here to make anything happen. But it is what it is. It's a risk we took. Uh, our car is pretty bad at following, so we kind of seen that here. But I still think that's fine. Unfortunately, Hulkenberg has a bit of a piss up error there, and Verstappen does overtake us. The question now is, are we going to keep up with Verstappen or not? Because if we're going to be able to keep up with Verstappen, him overtaking us is actually going to hurt us significantly. And uh, if not, then he might actually help our chances here because he will force cars to kind of slow down. But uh, yeah, that's kind of an open ended question if it's going to benefit or, us or not. We're running about uh, just four tenths quicker than Gasly here, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. And we have minor underfloor damage, which means that we're going to have to replace that after the end of this race. Magnuson ran a bit wide. Sure. There is, uh, some <clears throat> Stand by. So yeah, Hulkenberg now 11 seconds behind Albin. Definitely got held up. But uh, yeah, probably not going to get any points out of this one. It is just how it is sometimes, so you'll just have to live with that. Uh, I am also kind of going a little bit too quickly through this. And the reason that is twofold. I am, as I said, not feeling too great. <clears throat> but uh, we'll, we'll, pile, we'll pile it through. Sorry. I just had this creeping headache all day that's been getting significantly worse over the course of making this video. 
But yeah, we have caught up to Verstappen. He is, as you can see, a bit of a roadblock right now. And that is some of the things that I hate. If we can really run into him like this, we should be allowed to just overtake him. We're going to try and deploy and see if we can overtake him. But it looks like either the game just won't let us or, you know, we're just not trying enough. Although he does also have DRS from the car in front. So that was a really weird situation. Let's just put it like that. So unfortunately, us getting lapped here does, although let's face it, we probably wouldn't have gotten any points anyways, kind of put us ultimately out of contention. Now, we are going to conserve a little bit here because we're lacking basically a little bit of fuel. Just to make sure that we actually get over the line. That is the wrong setting. Want to switch it down to balanced. And yeah, unfortunately, we're going to end up 12th and 13th here. Another good race from us. Uh, but yeah, Verstappen here definitely slowed us down. I think Hulkenberg would have gotten Albin if it wasn't for that. But uh, yeah, nothing we can do about that at this stage. And the strategy here probably also could have been a tad better, in my honest opinion. Checkered flag. P12. But it is good to see that the, the AI can make a bit of a strategic uh, moves at times. So, so far it's looking good in terms of the difficulty changes. I'm looking forward to seeing if we see more of this uh, going forwards. Results here. Verstappen first, Paris fourth. Then we have Sainz and Leclerc in second and third for Ferrari. Then the two Astons, two Mercs, two Alpines. And unfortunately for us, it do this does push us down into... Okay, this is the DHL. I was so confused for a second. <laughs> I was so confused. We had no points. Mercedes is a ninth. Alpha Tauri ahead of them. Okay, I clicked a little bit too quick. We'll have a look at the standings afterwards. Unfortunately, here we had, you know, piss of for both cars. They happen. Uh, it's not anything we really can do with that. We also did fail a goal getting to Q3, so that's why we had that penalty. However, with this, let's have a quick look at the standing. So we're still sixth, um, which is where the board wants us. So it's not really a negative. And we have a destroyed underfloor. We have failed front wings. We should probably go ahead and manufacture new front wings immediately, honestly. Um, although we're going to have four of them. Is it going to be enough with four of them? Is uh, what I'm thinking right now. I think we're going to gamble and say that's okay. Um, now we're going to make two more. It's not a huge cost. so. But they are fairly durable. Okay, let's just stick it like this for now. And if we need to, we'll, you know, make more. If uh, such a time arrives. Point of braking, point of cornering for our drivers, which is great. We like to see that. Or it has medium confidence. Okay, so they're delighted with Jeddah and Sakia and just satisfied with Melbourne. Uh, medium confidence. I guess that's honestly fair. Uh, we've just uh, just taken over. And in terms of picker training schedule here, this is the thing that we want to kind of worry a little bit about. So the error chance is about 13% uh, as a base. And as you can see, it goes up here as the crew lacks training. But what I want to kind of focus a little bit on is gym training. But for now, I'm going to, you know, mess around a little bit, try and set up a plan. And then we'll see what we actually figure out. So. Get about five hundreds if we do it there. We'll see if we're getting well rested. It's still about a five hundreds. So. We'll try and get that time down a little bit. Maybe see if we can snatch the, uh, you know. The speed championship is going to be really nice with extra cash next year. For now, though, we are just going to do, as I said, set up a plan and then we'll see what we actually end up doing. So this is the plan that we will be going for, which is kind of interesting because there's gaps here. Now, the caps are easily explained. If you have a look at the, uh, the fact that we have exhausted training here. For these two sessions, we just lose about 400s. And that is actually less than you lose... Basically, as you can see, if we go from these two sessions under weary, we lose about seven. And if we go up here where we are tired, we gain a lot more. So the more tired your pick crew is, the slower the training is actually going to have an effect. So honestly, we could probably set up a training schedule that is less intensive than this and gain more of it. But right now, my head is banging and I just 
don't have the mental capacity to do so. But I'm definitely going to, probably, rather than definitely, going to revisit the uh, Pistol of Training. Because this is probably something we're going to have to take advantage of now if we want to have great Pistol of Crews. And, uh, well, we'll need to balance the fatigue levels versus the training. Can't really just put them onto a full month of training. It'll actually probably give you less results than spacing things out a little bit more. So, as I said, I'll revisit this sometime later uh, and have a look at it again. But that's the training plan we'll go for. Gonna cut down the piss up times with just about seven, seven hundreds. So, we're close to a tenth, but not really quite there yet. Sidebot has been completed, and in this case, we're just going to go ahead and manufacture them. And we're just going to rush two of them. And as you can see, it's going to take us 11 days. So we'll have a little bit of time before Baku. Now, rushing pieces isn't something I would really recommend, because it costs a lot extra. But if we want to get things done before Baku, it's something that we're going to have to do. In terms of design, uh, I think the thing we we're going to do is simply the front wing. And we could put in CFD time here. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea I've ever had. <clears throat> but uh, I'm also still tempted to just do another underfloor. Because um, I think that could also be a good idea. We could try something like this, which would actually be kind of interesting. It's not hugely, you know, a huge gain in terms of low speed cornering ability. But getting that extra dirty air tolerance, getting that extra brake cooling would be neat. And if we're putting safety time into this, we can make another super specialized front wing for the tracks that really need that low speed. So I think we're going to do this. Um, again, safety time could probably be more efficiently spent on something else like the underfloor. The underfloor just has better growth rates on every stat. But maximizing a few stats on a front wing like this could definitely also work. So we're just going to do this. Probably one stat too many, honestly. But at the same time, it's uh, it's not too bad. We're just going to go with it. And we'll just do it normally. We'll have it for Monte Carlo, which is kind of where we'd like to have a front wing, honestly. This one isn't as specialized as we'd like, but honestly, that should be okay. And we'll just have to slow down development a little bit here so that we don't lose out too much. Well, rather than losing out too much so we don't spend too much. So yeah, as you can tell, my head is a little bit over, all over the place. My apologies for that. We do have some minor technical changes here where we're going to either hit get low speed focus changes or high speed downforce changes. And honestly, I think what we're going to do is vote for the low speed ones. The low speed ones are focused on less parts. Uh, basically, you know, just the uh, underfloor, front wing and suspension. Well, that's half the parts, really, so not really. But I want to see if the AI can actually handle the research properly for next season, if we get that one. So I'm hoping for it, but we'll see. Now, in terms of design, uh, I think what we want to do here is just make another suspension design. And the reason for that is incredibly simple. Suspension, getting that brake cooling and the front wing cornering ability up on this would be neat. So as you can see now, this is a 10% gain. We are going to just go ahead and do this. It's going to be a very small game compared to the maximum, but we'll just we'll just make it like that. It is fine. Chassis manufacture is complete. And now the question becomes, what do we do now? Because we could make a suspension in time if we rush it, but we also want to make that underfloor. So I think what we are going to do here is just maximize one car. Potentially Hulk, I'm thinking. Maybe Magnuson, we'll see. And we're just going to deny this. I need all the factory time I can get right now. So please don't do that. Basically, the factory events means that uh, we lose factory days. In this case, we're losing 20 days of uh, factory. Basically, the manufacturing capabilities. And they want to increase three more days to that. So yeah, we're not so poor right now that we are desperate for factory time. Let's just put it like that. But yeah, in six days, as you can see there, we're going to get another design done. And the question now is, do we go ahead and manufacture another chassis? I think we'll do that. We should get it done in time. Just about. And the idea here is one car is going to have a lot of new parts. The other one is not. Research period has begun. Regulation mode. Let's see. Everyone voted for. Okay. 
I think this is the first time I've seen Liz. Um, but yeah, I definitely moved a little bit too quick there. Everyone has voted for the change. I think that is the first time, as I've said, I've seen that. So that gives us some work to do. And here's the big one, the underfloor. Now, in theory, yeah, because of the factory days, we aren't actually going to be able to make that in time. Let's just make three normally, I guess. Two normally. If I want to get these ready for Miami, I'm actually going to have to rush them. And even then, I'm, I'm not going to get one for... Yeah, we're just going to have to do this. It's a little bit annoying. But it needs to be done. Because the, the underfloor there is just such a huge... Huge part of the car. And... We should actually just start research at this point, honestly. And we are, of course, going to focus on what we're losing the most out of. But we're going to do research like this, probably. It's going to give us more stats for next year, but again, we're just going to do research this uh, this season. We want to finish sixth, and I want to see how well the AI, you know, develops the car compared to us. Uh, it's also the play here. Idle engineers, uh, I had a question about this, but again, the more engineers you put on a project, the quicker it's done. But unless you can run Project 24-7, uh, it's not actually... The length of the project has an effect on your expertise gain. So, basically, by putting more engineers in, you have a higher daily expertise gain, but the project finishes quicker. And you'll get less overall expertise than if you just ran with one engineer for the extended time. Now, you'll get more, as I said, by putting more engineers on it, provided that you can run projects for the entire year, non-stop. So... It's a little bit risky financially, which is why I prefer to just do what, use one engineer. It gives me wiggle room financially and uh, makes things a little bit easier. I'm not really being afraid of being outdeveloped even so. With that said, though, we are at Baku. Um, finish position streak. I think we'll say one car top 10 for five races. And we'll say one car top 10 here. We do have upgrades, so that's why I'm doing this. One car into Q3. And both cars top 15. There we go. Now we do want to set up new pieces on the car. And I'm not actually going to do the, the race weekend here. Because my head is killing me at this point. But we'll go over the parts that we have designed. And what they're going to give us. So this one is actually kind of interesting. That is a huge amount of high speed cornering. Decent medium. Decent low speed. We do lose some engine cooling. But that's going to be made up for. And... Uh, with the side pods that we made. And if we have a look at the car performance right now, we have fallen pretty far down from where we started. And we'll have to see if we can actually rectify, uh, rectify some of this with the new parts. So let's start. Let's put the chassis on. We have no front wing or rear wing yet, but we have a side pod. And this is what I was talking about. This side pod kind of makes up for the losses that we had from the chassis. We still have a plus 6% here. And we still gain a lot of cornering, a little bit of acceleration. Lose a lot of top speed though. Which is kind of important at Baku, but we do get a little bit of that back with this underfloor. Unfortunately, we only have one of these, so for now, we're just going to put it on car one. Uh, because I want to compare. And we'll have a little bit of a fight, I guess, in the comments of should Magnuson get the underfloor? Should uh, Hulkenberg get the underfloor? Do I roll a dice for whoever gets it? Basically, things like that. And we also have a suspension. Unfortunately, we only have one, but the second one should be done in time maybe no probably not but this one also gives brake cooling a little bit of low speed cooling which is important here and we'll put that too on car one and unfortunately because of the fact that we are going to have a little bit of a struggle particularly early on the fact that fact that we lose so many factory days too doesn't exactly help so with that the car analysis here is telling a little bit of a different story of the Haas vehicle uh, this is actually a little bit terrifying to me. I'm not joking. So, with the upgrades that we now have on the car, and let's say we're lacking a front wing, we're lacking a rear wing, we are potentially the best car in medium speed, the second best car in low speed, and the third best car at high speed, which hints to that just one car that is better than us, that would be the Red Bull cars on high speed. Maybe the Ferraris on... Nope. The Mercs? Okay, the Mercs have fallen down. The Astons? 
啊。Wait. Okay, so science car has the speed on the low speed side. Okay, that makes sense then. So we have a very interesting car right now, which actually is kind of competitive, particularly on the cornering ability. Oh, as you can see here, science has the speed by 0 0.001. So yeah, this is going to be interesting, particularly once we get to high speed tracks. But the dirty air tolerance is a bit of a problem. The brake cooling, the engine cooling. Getting these a little bit further up here would be sweet as well. So might have to see if we maybe develop the car a little bit further we're gonna get another suspension uh the rear wing front wing might do something with that but currently it looks kind of interesting that the fact that the has can be one of the top cars in terms of cornering before baku and honestly remember the fact that we lost 10 days of development uh we probably could have gotten parts for both cars if that was the case we might even have been able to rush a rear wing in time so yeah the bit of a could potentially have an even better has vehicle here but i'll be ending this episode here it took a little bit longer than i expected i uh, haven't really gone too much into the difficulty but that is just how it is i am looking forward to this game though it seems like it can be quite fun the ai is more reactive during the races uh maybe i ran them a little bit quicker but honestly uh, when i've been speeding up the races for the most part it's because nothing is really happening or going to happen we even ha haven't even had a safety car or a vsc so far so that is what it is. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this new series, please uh, drop a like on the video. A comment helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't, and I would appreciate that a lot. And hopefully, I shall see you around next time. Bye-bye.